Okay, so historic elections and uh, some might call one of the most secretive states in the world that may be some opening up. But let's bring in Mike Montesano, visiting research fellow at the Institute of the East Asian Studies. And he's visited Myanmar on numerous occasions. And uh, Mike, uh, what do you think of the election results that we're hearing so far? Well, assuming that the NLD has done as well as we're hearing, this is very important for Myanmar's continuing progress. Uh, what we've really been neglecting in our coverage of the story so far is news about the parliament into which Aung San Suu Kyi and her fellow members of the NLD will be moving if they take office. Uh, parliament in Myanmar has emerged in the past year as one of the most dynamic and open and deliberative centers of this reform process, presided over by a very energetic speaker, Thura Shui Ma. Parliament has been really scrutinizing bills brought before it, making its will known on certain policy issues, and frankly, emerging as a place for real debate. I think that Aung San Suu Kyi's ability to do business with President Thein Sein promises that she will also be willing, be able to do business with mem members of the parliament, including, frankly, members of the military-backed Union Solidarity and Development Party, many of whom are former doctors, former, former lawyers, former civil servants, sophisticated people who take a very serious view of their job in parliament. So I think that Mike, she will be joining, she and her, yes. Yeah, Mike, it sounds like uh, you're pretty confident that the, these baby steps, and some are viewing this as an opening up of Myanmar, has actual momentum in the country and full support from the parliament. What makes you think so, even when uh, Aung San Suu Kyi herself, the lady, uh, saying that these were still some, uh, some would say, uh, controlled polling that we saw in these elections? She said that there were irregularities in the way her party was campaigning. She did not talk about widespread irregularities uh, in, in, in the electoral process, as you reported. Uh, we're way beyond baby steps in Myanmar. Uh, there is a, a momentum for reform. There's a commitment to reform, both in the, in the government, in the parliament, in the Myanmar private sector. There are many, many problems ahead, but we're way, way beyond baby steps, ma'am. Really? Even though Suu Kyi has only uh, 35 of uh, 45 seats in this election? I mean, that's, that's a small percentage of the actual seats available in Parliament, which, by the way, 80 percent is still controlled if, by the ruling party. If we look at the patterns of scrutiny of bills during the second and third sessions of the new Parliament, we've seen that even military members of the new Parliament have acted independently, and other members of the USDP have acted independently in scrutinizing bills in front of the lower house of the parliament. These are not bills that are affecting military interests directly, but they are bills affecting the future of the economy. So as I say, the real story here has to be understanding the sort of body, elected body, the parliament, into which Aung San Suu Kyi and her fellow members of the NLD will be moving when they take office. And again, okay, it's important to understand the role of the speaker. All right. Uh, quickly, Mike, where do we go from here? So Suu Kyi has a parliament seat. Uh, her party has uh, seats in parliament. Uh, what's next for Myanmar? What's next for Myanmar is uh, taking advantage of the new policy tools made available now that the uh, exchange rate has been unified. This is really the next challenge. Okay, we'll be closely watching that considering we do have this new currency float and currency system in place uh, starting on April 1st. Thank you for that. Mike Montesano there joining us uh, from the Institute of Southeast Asian Studies uh, from Singapore this morning.